Hey, think about that. So step one, check if the input list is empty, if empty, return zero. So doing that check, um, it, it would be nice to, to, I just want, I want to have variables. I want to draw a line right here in my patch and say, okay, at this point, here's what I know. I know this list is not empty, um, and I know that I've already checked for that, and so I can work as if this list is um, something other than empty, and I, I and I can I know what I, I have available. So okay, that's what I want. At this line in the sand, I know this list is not empty, and I should need to keep going. Um, check the input list is so. At this line in the sand, basically. I should know that my input list has length greater than one. Um, at this line of the sand, step four here, compare middle element to target, I should know that I've prepared these three things, second half, first half, and middle. Um, my input list has length greater than one, I know what my target is, all that stuff, and I should be able to loop. I don't know, I guess, I guess on some level it's actually a pretty... Um, good realization of binary search, but look, I mean, talk about lines of code, like, look how much junk there is here, look how long it took me to do it, it took me almost half an hour to do this, um, at least to go through and talk about it and now think about it to make it better. Hmm, how could this be better? This is really what's happening, um, is... I'm first... Uh, first thing I do is check if the length of the list is equal to um, 1, and if it is, I do everything over here. And if it's not, I do everything over here. Um, everything over here. Checking to see if the, uh, splitting the list into its parts and then doing things based on those parts. So, the, this is the basic problem, is that what you have to do is um, first evaluate your condition and then pipe this, which is basically a closure, right? Like, so what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, here's um, my, uh, here is my um, condition, sorry, brain fart. Here's my condition. My condition is length of the list uh, equal to one or not. And here's everything you need to work with that from this moment on. Um, I guess that's the fundamental problem of doing this iterative kind of programming in Max, is you have to pass around your entire context, like, context. I have to pass from each step to the next the entire context of the algorithm, right? Um, you could imagine that I'm passing from here to here, not just a, um, a a list but a stack right I'm passing like I'm passing this list I'm passing this list um, but because at this point I've sent I've set a target already I, I'm really passing this too right like so down here when I want to check if this equal if the um, first element of the list is equal to the target that target comes from up here and I, I'm, I'm counting on it being there by the time this context of the function gets here. So there's a, there's a fundamental problem doing something iterative max right there. Okay, so we should write that down. That's a fundamental problem, is that um, we don't actually know... Um, sorry, I got distracted. Um, that's the fundamental problem. We don't actually know where all the context is that we need to evaluate the our function is in any given step. In fact, we have to send little fragmented bits of that context all over the place. So really, it's so actually really messy. Um, let's see. Okay. And yeah, the problem with gating there is that um, first we evaluate this condition, and then we pipe our context through into one or two different places. And here we want to do a three-way gate. It's a big mess, right? Like. We say, okay, here's one thing, set that equal to one. Here's one thing, set that equal to two. I guess it's not so bad. That basic problem of piping contact is the thing that's really fucked up. So, um, think about how to do that better. Okay, so I'm going to stop the video here. 
because this is binary search, and I've identified one problem that I think could be fun to play around with, which is um, having a function context and actually being able to do something iteratively um, using that context. Um, so yeah, in the next video I'm going to examine that and we'll see um, where that takes us, if anywhere.